Huang Di was the son of Xiao Dian. His surname was Gong Sun, and his prename Xian Yuan. Born a genius, he could speak when a baby, as a boy he was quick and smart, as a youth simple and earnest, and when grown up intelligent. In the time of Xian Yuan, Shenong became enfeebled. The princes made raids on each other and harassed the people, but Shenong could not chastise them, so Xian Yuan exercised himself in the use of weapons of war, so as to be able to punish irregularities. The princes all came and did homage, but Qi Yu, the fiercest of all, could not be subdued. Yan Di wished to oppress the princes, so they turned to Xian Yuan, who practiced virtue, marshaled his men, controlled the five elements, cultivated the five kinds of grain, pacified the nations, and went over all parts of his country. Training black bears, grizzly bears, foxes, panthers, lynxes, and tigers, he, with their aid, fought with Flame Emperor in the desert of Banquan, and, after three battles, realized his wishes. Qi Yu was a rebel, who did not obey the emperor's command, so Huang Di, levying an army of the princes, fought against Qi Yu, captured, and slew him in the desert of Zhulu. The princes all agreed that Xian Yuan should be the emperor in place of Shinong, under the title Huang Di. Those in the empire who would not submit, Huang Di pursued and chastised, and when they were subdued he left them. He made cuttings in hills, opened roads, and was never at rest. Eastward his empire extended to the sea, Ball Hill, and the ancestral Dai Mountain, westward to the Hollow Cave and Coxhead Hills, southward to the Yangtze River and Xiongxiang Hill, while in the north he drove out the Xuanyu. He made a treaty on Kettle Hill, and built a city on the slopes of Zhulu. He was constantly changing his residence, while his troops formed an encampment about him. He ordered his officers to be named after Cloud Omens. He appointed a chief and deputy superintendent over international affairs, and the various states being at peace, he worshipped the demons and spirits of the hills and streams with the Fong and Shan ceremonies in numbers. He obtained a valuable tripod, and made calculations of future events, appointing chief of the winds, strength governor, ever first, and great swan, to direct the people to act in accordance with the celestial and terrestrial arrangements, the dark and bright prognostications, the disputations on life and death, the planting of the crops, plants, and trees in their seasons, and the transformations of birds, beasts, insects, and moths. He also prepared a record of the movements of the sun, moon, and stars, the flow of the tides, and the properties of clay, stones, metals, and gems. He devoted much careful attention to these things, and his observation was applied to ascertaining how fire, water, wood, and other elements could be used economically. There was an auspicious omen of the earth's energy, and he was therefore called Yellow God. Huangdi had twenty-five sons, of whom fourteen received surnames. Huangdi lived at Xianyuan Hill, and married a woman of Western Range, land called Lezu, who was his principal wife, and bore him two sons, both of whose descendants held imperial sway. The eldest, named Xian Xiao, or Qingyang, dwelt on the Jiang stream, and the other, who was named Changyi, dwelt on the Rua stream. Changyi married a woman from the Shu Hills named Changpu, who bore him a son, Gao Yang, who possessed the virtue of a sage. Huangdi died, and was buried at Xiaoshan, and his grandson, Changyi's son Gao Yang, came to the throne under the title Emperor Zhuangxiu.